Satoshi Nakamoto found a solution to the double spending problem without intervention of a trusted third party. It's in his 2008 white paper that he describes his solution to the problem and essentially he says create a public transaction database in which all transactions are visible to all participants and allow anyone to check new transactions for double spending. The real invention of Satoshi Nakamoto resides in the way this database is collectively maintained and how collective trust in this database is created. And it's all done with proof-of-work longest chain consensus, also known as mining. We'll come back to that in length in section 1.2. So the result of this invention is a system that for the first time in history created a real equivalent of cash for the internet, allowing participants to make trustless and direct person-to-person -person payments over the internet without the intervention of a trusted third party. Let's have a quick demonstration. This picture is found on the internet and allow us to talk about the Bitcoin address that it shows on the front. Now, the QR code on the t-shirt, you can scan it with the QR code scanner of, for example, your smartphone. And the result of that scanning yields a Bitcoin public address. Rapidly between brackets, that is the public key from the private public key scheme we shortly mentioned a few slides back. Now, the website blockchain.com is one of many websites that allows to access and consult the content of the Bitcoin transaction database. And when you check the above Bitcoin address, then you see this. So here we have the result of this Bitcoin database consultation. We can see that on that public address, there have been a total of 16 transactions with a final balance of 0.021 Bitcoin. On the bottom of the screen, by scrolling down, you have a list of all the transactions that have ever been executed on this public address. As each Bitcoin in the system has a unique number, when you receive a certain Bitcoin from this person, then you can check that this person didn't already spend that Bitcoin in another transaction. Now, in reality, that check is done automatically by the software that you run on your computer. Now, that's Bitcoin. But where is the term blockchain coming from? Well, it comes from the way that the database is constructed. The database is essentially a register of blocks. Think of it as pages. So blocks of transactions that are linked together with cryptography. Each block holds beside the transactions, also the cryptographic digital fingerprint of the previous block, and in that way, a chain of blocks is created, also known as a blockchain. Then, blockchain is also used to indicate the computer program, the protocol, that allows for the participating computers to function correctly. Each computer in the peer-to-peer -peer network runs this protocol that determines how computers communicate with each other, how transactions are created, shared and verified, and how the database consensus and trust is created between participants. Now, the term blockchain is also used to indicate other elements that surround the blockchain database. So, blockchain is also used to indicate the peer-to-peer or person-to-person -person network of participants that maintain the blockchain database and transact in the blockchain database. And then last but not least, blockchain is also used to indicate the value system that blockchain enables called the Internet of Value. Till Bitcoin, we only had the Internet of Information. Now, we also have the Internet of Value, which 100 years from now, in retrospect, will be, I think, considered as a pivotal point in economic history. See you in the next video.